a long way apart, but what changed in this meeting was the president has now selected two people from his administration to directly negotiate with us, um, Steve Rochetti and the OMB director. Um, I will have Garrett Graves and my staff meet with them, and we've got a short time frame here to try to find out how we could come to an agreement. Um, but look, I wish we had done this back in February. I requested then, let's sit down and meet. It took the president 97 days. He and Schumer thought people would just want to just raise the debt ceiling without looking at it. And you all know, you've heard me say this many times, this is giving your child a credit card. But they keep reaching the limit, and you have every year after year just raised the limit to a point that now you can't afford it. Shouldn't you look at how you spend your money? And the, the great thing about this is, in our bill, Limit, Save, Grow, not only are we able to grow our economy, we get more people into the workforce by work requirements, lift people out of poverty. Um, it helps our supply chain, makes us less dependent upon China, lower the energy cost. Um, that helps with the environment around the world, lowers the CO2 emissions globally. Then when you look at permitting reform, that in itself will help America build things again, help us to compete around the world as well. Something that every American wants. Cut that red tape so we could build the things that we desire. Uh, limit spending into the future. We know government has spent too much. And the savings. I mean, only in America, only in Congress would it be up for debate of whether, with a pandemic over, billions of dollars you already appropriated that people have not spent for two years to pull that back and give it back to the hardworking taxpayer of America, I don't see how that's even debatable. But only in Congress do Democrats think they, they have a hard time doing that. So uh, that doesn't mean we're going to get to an agreement. All it means is I think the process is a better process as something I've been requesting for a long time that gives us a structure to actually be more productive but a short time frame to get it done. We, we did. We, we went round and round giving our different perspectives. And uh, at, when it finally came, I said, Mr. President, these, these are all good discussions, but frankly, these are things that we discussed on February 1st. Had we been able to talk for those 97 days, we could have got a lot done. We could have talked about broader things. But unfortunately, you, you, you narrowed what we could talk about. You made mischaracterizations of what Republicans would do. We actually proved today we we're spending more on veterans. So let's stop the political games. Let's get down. We've only got 15 days to go. Um, and let's be serious about this. And he agreed with that tactic. What, what, what numerical, what number are you looking at for in terms of total cuts to attach the debt to increase? And are you open to a debt to increase of two years Look, oh, beyond look, in the Republican plan, we raised it for $1.5 trillion. We, we cut almost $5 trillion, uh, or made savings, found that we could find the savings. I think mean, anytime somebody wants to raise the debt ceiling more, show me where we want to save more. That's really the framework that we laid out. We're open to discuss, but from the same perspective is, if we're able to save $5 trillion to raise the debt ceiling and you want to go longer, you've got to be open to doing more items as well. But are you talking more than that? Out of all the things that are on the table, why do you draw a red line about work requirements and you have other red lines? Look, I, I look at the bill we passed. We're the only ones that have been able to raise the debt ceiling. What we look to is limit, save, grow. I want to curve inflation. We all know how inflation created in America. Democrats spent six trillion more dollars. Every economist will tell you, everybody warned us about it. And then unfortunately, even the Treasury Secretary lied to us about it, said it was transitory. When it caused more damage and harm to every American, what we're able to do by limit is curb the inflation. We want to get off our dependency on China. How do we do that? We help our supply chain. We get more people into, uh, out of poverty into work. And remember what we're talking about when we're talking about work requirements. It's only for those people who are able-bodied with no dependents. You could be going to school, no problem. You could be looking for work, no problem. Wisconsin just passed this by 82%. The president, as senator, voted for it. We find every statistical data, it helps Americans get better jobs and work. And then let's just turn it on its head. So if you take a Democrat position, what you're telling to Americans is, I need to go borrow more money from China to give to somebody who's able-bodied, no dependents, and pay them not to work. Well, what you really want to help them is get them into the workforce. 
give them a, a sense of pride. Give them more in common. Every statistic tells you it helps the individual. And I want to help more Americans. I want to get us off the dependency of China. And I want to curve inflation. But more importantly, I want to stop that supply chain problem, too. Yes, ma'am. Look, if the Democrats want to pass a bill and we can go to conference, I'm more than welcome to see what the Democrats can pass. The Democrats control the Senate. They've had as much time as we have. They talked about it for a long time, but they've passed nothing. So uh, I don't see why adding something new would help. Yes. Have you expressed worker kindness as a red line at the White House or the rest of the leadership? Look, I've talked about a lot of things um, in it, and I'm not going to negotiate with all of you. But when we look at wh what we're trying to achieve here, I think it's very important that we help people get out of poverty. Well, a number of things. We're asking Durham to come in and testify so we can look at it more. It really raises the question about Adam Schiff. You remember when he told the American people he had proof? Remember when he told them he didn't know the whistleblower? And what he put America through and openly lied to us, and now it's proven in this as well? It raises a lot of questions about his, just his character, his standing inside of Congress, or whether he should be, even be in Congress. Yes? Look, they, they have communicated in these meetings, so we kind of know where everybody stands. It gives us a good feel. They, they too, thought this was a good idea. I'm sure the, in the negotiations of where we go that they will confer with them as well. So it's no different than what President Trump did with Mnuchin negotiating with um, Nancy Pelosi and others. So it's, it's, it's what, has ha what has worked in, in the past. Unfortunately, the Democrats wasted four months saying it had to be a clean debt, saying say you wouldn't negotiate. Well, you know what? All that has changed now, and now we're at a place we should have been back in February. Clearly you were calling on the president to put some offers or ideas on the table. Did he put any on the table today? Look, I don't think it's best to negotiate, um, to tell you the thing. We have open discussions. There's things we agree and disagree, but I think we could find common ground, especially when you look at the Limit, Save, Grow bill. So obviously, at the end of the day, this is going to have to be a bipartisan agreement. Are you confident? Very much so. I mean, think about it for one moment. Here's a Republican conference that none of you gave credibility to or thought we could achieve anything. You wrote a lot about the Senate. The Senate hasn't passed much. But week after week, from the Parents' Bill of Rights, from standing up for people for safety, rolling back what D.C. wanted to decriminalize, from ending the pandemic when the President said he wouldn't do it, from the ability of lifting the debt ceiling long before the Treasury Secretary told us June 1st was the deadline. We took action ahead of time, not even knowing when it would come. Two, not ignoring the border like the White House has done, just like the debt ceiling, but no, having a border security bill. And we will continue along this path as we go. Look, we are, just as we made our commitment to America, we went out and listened to America, and we're continuing to listen to you. We want to make this economy stronger. We want to make your streets safer. We want to make your energy prices lower. We want to make America stronger. And that's what we do week after week. And we, we have found that collectively we can work together and find solutions to the problems that America needs most. Yes, sir. Um, how much more optimistic are you now about getting to you? Look, I'm not more optimistic. You're only 15 days away and you're trying to raise the debt ceiling. The only thing that I think is better is now we have a format, a structure. It's something that I requested back in February, at the very first of February. Um, the president, for all that time, said, never negotiate. Well, that's not what 74% of America thought that was the wrong position. It took the president a long time to finally admit that he needed to do exactly what we're doing today. When will the parties start meeting? Look, I'd like to see if they could even meet today. Um, they know each other well. Uh, they've met in the past, and I think uh, there's respect for uh, on both sides of the aisle for all of them. So give them opportunity. Speaker, I know you ruled out a short-term debt bill before, but now we've got the Obama administration. Does that help you exceed? Look, I, I think we have the time to find a solution now. 
One of the biggest problems in this place is, it's based on your question itself. You're already asking a question, well, you're going to fail. Do you want to do a short term? I'd rather look at the opposite. I'd rather tell you, we're going to get this done. L let's expect more out of our elected officials, OK? Yes? Could you discuss uh, in the timeline of when you want to get this done? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Janet Yellen says it's June 1st. And you walk it back, how many days do you need to pass it in the House, and how many days do you need to pass it in the Senate? Uh, that was really my message to the President today. Time is of the essence. We can go around and round more, but I don't think that's going to product, be productive, and you're going to bumble your way into a default. And I don't want that for the American public, and we're the only people, Republicans in the Congress, that have lifted the debt ceiling. Now, if you, at the end of the day, want to just pass our bill, then okay. But otherwise, you ought to change the structure of how we're negotiating. Right. Yes, ma'am. Um, your bill would extend the debt limit only through March mm -hmm. of next year. Democrats want to have it, the debt limit extended through the election. Have you guys resolved that? Matter on how long or Look, nothing has been resolved in this negotiation. So the only thing that has changed is we finally have a format that has proven to work years in the past. Now, all the years in the past, they had more time to negotiate. So uh, it's more critical. But the difference, too, is the House Republicans have actually passed something that raises the debt ceiling. So if you get against the wall, you always have a product out there you could pass to make sure you didn't default if that's what you want to do. Uh, a lot of speculation has been about uh, sort of non-budgetary items like border uh, security and funding. Um, I'm curious as to how much um, those are, in your mind, good places to work at, and how much whether you're willing to trade those for less dollars in cutting. And if not, how much of that difference is going to be made look, in tax? If you if you look in our bill, live it, save, grow. We have cutting the red tape so we could build things in America. I think that makes America stronger, saves money, and gets more people working. I would think everybody in America would want to save more American lives and stop fentanyl from coming across the border. I think every American would want to stop catching people on the terrorist watch list just walking across our border. We just caught somebody from Afghanistan. And we've watched what people that came out of that prison in Bakram was able to do and kill 13 American uh, military individuals. You know, just in the month of February alone, we caught more people on the terrorist watch list coming across that border illegally than we caught in the entire four years of the last administration. That is a problem. And if we could do something about the border as well, I would welcome it. Uh, I'm coming on Thursday from some of your foes on whether to expel George Santos. Do you support that expulsion? resolution, or will your and will the House move to table that? Look, on the look uh, I, I think. The George Santos indictment is very serious. I also know in America you're innocent to proven guilty. But I don't want to sit around and wait. So what I would like to do is move this to ethics. I think I would like the House to take up this work and look at it. And if it rises to that occasion, then. Because as we look to all these differences, I mean, we just had a report come out from Durham. What does that say about Adam Schiff? He lied to the American public. Should he be? expelled from Congress as well, taking Congress and America down through the, uh, uh, the path that he did, lying to us. So I think these um, accusations are very serious. I have a very concern about George Santos. So what I do firmly believe is just in the foundation of this country, you got to have a process. So I'm going to ask that the ethics get, look at this, and don't do a short time basis. I mean, don't do a long time basis. I think we can look at this very quickly and come to a conclusion on what George Santos did and did not do through ethics, a safe bipartisan committee, equal number of Republicans and Democrats. And I think that's when you bring it back to Congress and if it rises to the ability to vote. I would like to refer this to ethics. I, I'll have a conversation with Hakeem. I would like the ethics committee to uh, move rapidly on this. I think there's enough information out there now that they could start looking at this. Um, and I think they could come back to Congress probably faster than a court case could. To be clear, are you saying you're going to move to expel the ship? No, I, I'm raising the question to you. If, if the Democrats keep this priority, which they haven't held to their own members in the past, right? <coughs> and I think for Congress to work properly, just like every American, you should have due process, right? Because now what are we finding with the Durham case, right? Um, the Democrats rose and wanted to impeach President Trump based upon a made-up Russia collusion, where it was pushed in this Congress 
by Adam Schiff. They actually changed the rules of Congress not to do impeachment through judiciary. They went to Adam Schiff's committee. Adam Schiff went on television and said, I have proof and lied to the American public. And he took this country down for four years, spending millions of dollars, but at the same time disrupting democracy. If you really care about democracy, can you lie and make a false report to take a president down going against what the voters have voted for? and you stay in office? That raises a serious question. Now, the same thing that comes to George Santos, he's gotten indicted, but he still has a process. I don't want to wait around for the courts to act. What I would like to do is have the House take action and have a process here. So let's send it to, to ethics, which is an equal number of Republicans and Democrats. We've got on there, the, the chair is Dave Joyce, a former prosecutor who understands, and I think they could do this work rather rapidly and come back and report to the full House on what they find. Mr. Senator, Donald Trump last week saying that the fault might not be a big deal, make it more difficult to get your members on board for whatever. No, I, no I think our members were able to show that we could raise the debt limit and based upon to limit, to save, and to grow this economy. I, th I think President Trump is a great negotiator. And I think with President Trump, when he does that, he's trying to help a negotiation. Have you talked to him? I've yeah. talked to President Trump. Yeah. Just back to Santos, when you say you want this done rapidly, what are you talking weeks, months, how long do you think? You know, I, I can't preset, but I know Dave Joyce being a former prosecutor. He doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. I think there's enough information out there that they can look at this and come back and have a process that the whole Congress could support one way or another. Um, and I think from any American, especially when we look at our Constitution, that's the way we should handle this. Um, and I have a trust in them and the Ethics Committee to do their work. Is President Biden's decision to shorten his presence as a result of your suggestion about the things that you do discuss? Well, the, pre the President did start by saying he was going to Japan and meet with the G7. His trip after that was to see some other leaders, but he, he raised the question that those other leaders will be at G7 so he could see them there and then come back, and he said he was available by phone and others. Should Leader Schumer ask the Senate to come back next week? Can we mention that and talk about that? Look, they have to deal with um, their time frame, and I know they will. I don't think they're going to sit out while we're dealing with a debt ceiling, but um, I think as we negotiate, if we're able to come to an agreement, I'm pretty confident they'd come back and vote on it. Last question? Yes, sir. Just to get back to Schiff and Santos, have they not indicted congressmen with one taking 13 indictments? Well, there's been a number of members in the past who've been indicted, especially on the Democrat side, and I never saw somebody raised to remove them from the House. Um, and really, if you, want, if you are now raising the question of this, because they were moving this even before the indictment, I think when the indictment has been um, put in place, I think the House should take actions right now. I think we should have ethics take the work to seriously look. These are serious uh, um, accusations. Um, but I also think everybody in America is, is able to have due process, just like Mr. Santos would be able to do with court. But I think from the House perspective is, should we wait till the court takes our action, or can the ethics look at this and look at it very seriously? And what I would encourage the ethics committee to do, look, I can't control ethics one way or another. But what I would encourage Ethics Committee to do is to do this quickly, to look at this. Don't, don't play time out. There's enough facts. There's enough ability for people to be come in and give your answers and diligently together in a bipartisan manner look at it. I think for the long uh, term of the House and the respect of the House, that is the way we should handle things, and especially going forward to anybody else. Yesterday, you're with um, Iran support and impeaching uh, Secretary Mauro Pitt. Do you support impeaching? Look, I, I think like anything else, I look at it from a constitutional point of view. I was very clear with Secretary Mayorkas months ago, even before this Congress took over, that I think he had failed at his job. I think every American when they look at when Mayorkas goes on television, tells them the border is secure, and why you have in the camera frame thousands of people just walking into America, nobody believes that. I bet if you hook Mayorkas up to a lie detector test, he could not pass a lie detector saying, say, the border is secure. I think America has a lot of questions, and I think he should have to come before the committee and answer all Americans about this. Other than that, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure spending time with you. I know you have a choice in your interviews, and I appreciate <laughs> you selecting me. Take care.